In this video, we are going to discuss what are the components of uh, inventory holding cost, why inventories are important, and how can we manage inventories under different conditions. Although businesses do not want to keep inventories, they, keep, uh, they have to keep inventories for a couple of reasons. One, uh, uncertainty in the customer demand. We don't know exactly how many uh, products we are going to sell. That means we have to keep enough inventory uh, to satisfy that uncertain demand. The second one is the uncertainty in the supply side. Uh, these uh, uncertainties could be associated with the quality, uh, the quantity of the products we are going to get, the cost and delivery times. And finally, we keep inventories because shipping larger quantities is cheaper. The Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, CSCMP, publishes this yearly report called the State of the Logistics Report. Uh, their 2017 report sh shows that in uh, 2015, US businesses spent $427 billion uh, as inventory holding cost, right? Uh, and that basically corresponds to uh, $2,500 billion worth of inventories kept by the industry. Inventory holding cost has four components. Let's look into them one by one. Uh, cost of capital is the largest one and it is estimated to be between 20 and 40 percent. And I know many of you are probably thinking that that's very high uh, in the context of your business. For example, you might be working for a branch and you might be charged by 2 to 5 percent uh, for your inventory per year uh, from the headquarters for having those inventories. But when we talk about the cost of capital, we are basically thinking about the opportunity cost as well. So if you hadn't invested in inventory, but invested in a stock market or opening a new branch, what would be your expected return on investment? And basically that gives you the cost of capital. The second one is the storage cost, and that is estimated to be between 15 and 18 percent in the U.S., uh, obsolescence cost that's five to seven percent and insurance and taxes one to two percent when you add up those numbers it it brings your overall bit somewhere between 40 and 65 percent again i think some of you may be disagreeing with the 40 to 65 percent inventory holding rate because that means uh, you need uh, to be very careful about the inventories because they are expensive. Now, uh, for many businesses, selling this idea of 40 to 65 percent is really difficult. So, what I think is that even if you are using the cost of capital at a lower rate, your uh, probably realistic inventory holding rate or cost is going to be somewhere between 20 to 25 percent. So. Uh, if you're really using less than 20%, I uh, ask you to reconsider the numbers, look into your cost of capital and the opportunity cost one more time before making the final decision. There are different types of inventories and usually these types are determined based on the use of inventory or where they are in a supply chain. The in-transit inventory or pipeline inventory means that the product is on the move. Basically, when you are transporting items or products, they are called in-transit or pipeline inventory. The second category is the working process inventory or WIP. Uh, these are products semi-finished and waiting to be basically uh, finished, further processed and finished. Uh, when you go to a manufacturing facility, you may see that some products are semi-finished and waiting for the next um, machine to process them that that is basically the working process then we have the regular cyclical or seasonal inventories if you guys remember the forecasting that we did in the previous week there were different figures uh, showing the pattern in the demand based on demand pa pattern basically will have regular cyclical or seasonal uh, demands Safety inventory or safety stock is all about the uncertainty. So we keep additional inventory in the system in case demand is uh, more than our expectation or in case some delay uh, in the delivery uh, from the supplier. And speculative or anticipatory uh, inventory is that uh, you are basically expecting an event happen in the future. For example, it could be a price increase, right? Uh, in those situations, you may be keeping additional inventories, right? 
and finally obsolete or dead stock these are the inventories are not probably useful for you at this point there are uh, various uh, inventory management philosophies some of them are uh, as follows uh, the pool inventory policy uh, management philosophy basically draws the inventory into stocking uh, location the idea here is that each stocking location let's say a branch is an independent entity and they make their own decision about uh, what to buy when to buy and how many to buy and then the second one is the push strategy push strategy basically allocates the inventory to the stocking location so if you are a, if you are a branch you don't make the decision about the which item to buy or when to buy it is managed by a centralized location usually uh, between push and pull there is a management style difference as well when there is a pull strategy that means there is a decentralized decision making process and when there is a push strategy there is a uh, centralized decision making process right and push strategy basically allows the economies of scale in terms of production and transportation then we have the just in time uh, idea behind the just in time is to basically minimize the inventory or need for the inventory and it is uh, based on the toyota production system next we have the supply driven inventory management in this case basically supply quantities or timings are not known we are facing some shortages in this case you don't really have anything to say other than uh, getting and processing all the products you can get and finally we have this aggregate control which we'll study in the next video in more detail this is basically based on uh, this Pareto observation that 80% of the value is generated by 20% of the uh, products, right? And based on this observation, products are categorized into three or more pro broad product groups. And then we have strategies to manage each one of them individually. Right? Thank you for your time. Please let me know if you have any questions.